We're going to have some fun with this very first Flexbox project. And in this guide, what we're going to do is we are going to create a air page. So we're going to create one of those kinds of air pages that you see where it says, oh, I'm sorry, you've reached this this page and something went wrong and we're going to add images and we're going to use Flexbox to arrange everything on the page. We're also going to use some custom fonts and do some things like that. So it looks like a real air page and it's something that you can use in future projects. So right here, I am going to place a link to this little Tumblr bot in the show notes. And so this is going to be the image that we're going to be using. So click on download and that is going to to give you access to the actual root file. And then you can save image. And then I would go and place this inside of the project itself. So we can say Flexbox course, and you can just save it right here. And later on, you can move it to whatever path that you'd want it to be at. But that's going to give you the image that you need. And we're, I'll double click the top and now we are back to our setup. Now I already have Gulp running in the background so any changes that I make here to the HTML file are still being updated. So I could say some updated content, hit save and you can see it updates there on the right hand side. So now with all of this in place, let's actually start building and using Flexbox. I'm gonna have everything here on the same page. So I'm going to go and I'm gonna be using embedded styles. There is literally no difference between me using embedded styles and having a style sheet. Like in a real project, you would have a separate style sheet and then you'd call it, but I'm going to have it here on the same page just so everything is in front of us. So let's give this a title say air page and now let's go and add some content to the HTML body. So I'm going to create first a wrapper div. So I'm going to say div dot air underscore wrapper. And if you do not, or if you're not using Visual Studio Code, then you may have to type that out manually. But it's another one of the nice shortcuts that I really like with VS Code. Uh, if you're on Atom or Sublime, I believe the plugin that allows you to do that is called Emmet. But it's a nice way of being able to write your HTML code without having to type each one of the brackets and those kinds of things. So now that we have our wrapper div, I'm going to create another div inside of it. And so I'm going to say div dot air underscore heading. And this is going to be where we place our heading. And for right now, let's go with an H2. And I'll say yikes what dot dot dot. And then we can put in whatever kind of air slogan you want. So I'm going to say who knows when that page will be available, comma, would you like to try another? And now I can save this file and you can see that that got updated. So everything there is working properly. And now let's bring in our image. So this is still gonna be inside of the wrapper, but not inside of the heading. So I can say image and the source of this, I should just be able to say tbot.png. And if I hit save, yes, it brought that in. So that is working properly. Now I know this looks hideous and that's kind of part of the point right now. We are simply adding all of the raw HTML. We have not touched any of the CSS code or the Flexbox code yet. So that is what we're doing next. Now, if you get a little air icon and you do, don't see the little Tumblr bot here, what that means is that the file is not at the right location. So if you open up your file explorer here, you should see your little T-Bot png file here if you don't that means you might have saved it in the wrong spot so now that we have that let's start and let's start adding our style so i'm going to come up here to the top and i'm going to oh i need to create my embedded style so i'm going to say style 
And now inside of here, this is where all of our embedded Flexbox styles are gonna go. So I'll say body, and then inside of here, we'll go with a background color. So I wanna have some type of background color, and I'm gonna go with light, golden rod yellow for our background color and if i hit save that got updated so that's working well and next let's create our air wrapper styles so i'm going to say dot air wrapper and so inside of here this is going to be our first introduction to flexbox the very first thing that we're going to need to do is to call display flex. So anytime that you are working with Flexbox, this is the first item that you're most likely going to type in. So this is going to give us a very special kind of tooling uh, called Flexbox that allows us, like you saw right now, it just readjusted. It didn't fix it, didn't put it in the kind of styles we want yet, but it did rearrange range how they're positioned. So instead of using some of the older kinds of display methods such as block or absolute or anything like that, what we can do with Flexbox is say that we actually want to use flex style definitions here. And so that is the way that you can start off by declaring it. And then below that, we're going to add a few other elements. So we're going to say justify content and then this is gonna be centered. And then I want to align items. And then this is also going to be centered. And then I wanna set the height of this to 100 VH. And what that stands for is for 100% of the view height. And so this is going to take into account different browsers. So this is better than just saying 100%. And then next we need to say flex direction and then we're going to go with column. So let's save this and see what it's doing. So this is looking a lot better. So let's actually grow this out a little bit. You can see this is starting to shape up. We're not where we want to be quite yet, but it is definitely looking a lot better. And notice how without us really doing anything, I'll stretch it all the way across. So without us really doing anything besides a few lines of code, we were able to do something that used to take a very long time. Now, if you have never worked with older versions of CSS or CSS by itself, it's very interesting. One of the concepts that you think would be incredibly straightforward, which would be to align items vertically and horizontally, used to take quite a bit of code. And this is this is when I fell in love with Flexbox was when I saw that in just about three or four lines of code, I could align items right on the page and place them directly in the center. That is something that with pure CSS is not exactly a trivial manner. Uh, so let's shrink this back up and then we'll keep going because we're not quite done. We still have a few other things obviously to, uh, to get done and then we'll be able to have a really nice looking air page. So, okay, so that is stretched there. And now that we have our air wrapper, let's come and go to what is called our flex item. So we're gonna talk about this later on, but what we have here with our air wrapper, this is the wrapper for our entire flex kind of setup. And then inside of it, we're going to have flex item. So you're gonna hear the term flex container. That's what this is. This is a flex container. And then inside of it, you have flex items. And so here we're going to take our air wrapper and then grab our air underscore heading. And let's just add some margin on the bottom. So margin bottom of 42 pixels. 
And lastly, let's update our image. We only have one image on there. If you are working with an application that has multiple images on the same page, then you can add a class or ID to them and select it. But for right now, we can just come and grab the actual image itself, not dot image. And inside of here, I'm going to say width and 50%. Get rid of that line, hit save, and there we go. It is working. Now you may think he's looking a little bit tiny, but the reason for that is because usually you're going to be looking at him like this. And so you can see when it is full screen, this is looking beautiful. And you can play with any of those styles to see if there's anything else that you wanna do. Uh, the only thing that I would say that I would like to do to make this look a little bit more professional, something you actually would wanna show off, is let's grab a custom font. So. Let's go to fonts.google.com and then this is going to give us access to come and grab a much nicer looking font. Uh, the one that I have been using quite a bit lately is called Merriweather. So I'm going to come and get this and the way you get a custom font, you just click on select this font. It's going to pop up right here along with instructions. So I can copy this code, switch back to Visual Studio Code, and right up at the top, so you could place this like right above your styles, you can come and paste that in. And now that you have that, uh, we now can access it exactly like how they said right here. So I'm going to copy that switch back and now inside of the body i'm going to say font family merryweather serif hit save and now if we switch back to the browser and look at our air page you can see this looks a lot cleaner it's a much more professional looking font and so this is something that i would actually use in fact i am about to integrate this exact air page into a live production application that i have that's the reason why i picked it out and thought it'd be a fun project so let's review the flexbox elements of uh, of everything we just walked through. So uh, as you can see, it didn't take a lot of code to integrate Flexbox. It's part of the reason why people are loving it. With just creating a Flex container here by saying display Flex, we called justify content, we centered it, then we said align items center, and then Flex direction column and that did all of the work for us now if you are wanting some more details on this do not worry we're actually going to dive into what each one of these elements represent in this course what i wanted to do was to start off by showing you how with just a few lines of flexbox code we we're able to build a pretty cool looking page just by doing that and uh, this is something that i do in a number of real production applications and so whenever you need to have something centered directly on the page, and this would also work if you're centering, needed to center something directly in a div or something like that, then you can come look at this project and see exactly how to do that. And uh, now we're going to get into some more of the details and seeing exactly what does justify content represent what other options can we pass to it and the same thing with the line items and flex direction and how can we use multiple flex containers and those kinds of things but for right now great job if you went through that you now know how to use flexbox to center items on a page